They were criminally charged for illegally voting. Their arrest even disclosed by the governor in August. But months later, there's even more confusion. A woman arrested in the voter fraud roundup is still getting information in the mail suggesting she can vote. Only Katie Legrone is working to get answers from the state to clear up this mixed messaging. Oh my God. Hold on. When Tampa police arrested Ramona Oliver back in August for illegally voting during the 2020 election, oh my God. police body cam footage okay. shows the 56 year old caught completely off guard, confused over why. I voted, but I ain't fought, commit no fraud. Voting when you're not supposed to. Why are we going to jail? Like most of the other 19 former felons arrested as part of Governor DeSantis's voter fraud roundup. We're not just going to turn a blind, eye, a blind eye to this. The days of that happening in Florida are over. Oliver, who served 18 years in prison for murder, making her ineligible to vote, maintains her innocence. Somebody's dropping the ball and she's being prosecuted because of it. Her attorney, Mark Rankin, explains how the state had even sent her multiple voter registration cards appearing to give her the green light to vote. My client got three different voter registration cards over time from the state and then recently even got a sample ballot from the local supervisor of elections because she's clearly still on their list of registered voters. Recently? A couple of weeks ago. He provided us with a copy. The sample ballot mailed to her by the Hillsborough County Supervisor of Elections Office is for the upcoming general election and details everything she needs to know to cast her vote by mail early or in person November 8th. It just blew my mind that she was still on their list and that she'd gotten that in the mail. What does that tell you? It tells me that the state and the supervisor of elections, some combination of the two, is not doing their job. The local supervisor of elections wouldn't talk to us on camera, but a spokesperson sent us an email telling us all the confusion boils down to a name change. Oliver registered to vote under a different last name earlier this year, and while her previous name had already been removed from the voter rolls, the office didn't learn about her name change until after they sent her a sample ballot. Spin around and put your feet out the, the car. She has since been removed again. According to the local office, the Department of State, which should have flagged her as ineligible to vote under her new name, still hasn't contacted them about it. It's just crazy. But not surprising to attorney Stephen Crawford, whose client, also an ex-felon and also charged with voting illegally in 2020, did get notified he was ineligible to vote. The problem. The key to this is the date. It basically is telling us yeah. two years later that we can't vote. Okay, thank you very much. You know, that helps a lot. We've, you know. What was your reaction, sir, when you saw this letter? When I saw this letter, um, my reaction was, this is classic CYA. Uh, they are attempting to cover their you-know-what. Neither the governor's office nor the Department of State, which runs elections in Florida, has responded to our request about these cases. This is just... The first step, there's many more in the pipeline. But back in September, the state told us individuals are ultimately responsible for knowing if they can legally vote. He signed it. They mailed it in. Crawford tells us the state has already offered his client what he describes as a very lenient plea deal. No jail time, no probation. Problem is, is they want us to plead guilty. And we're not pleading guilty to something we didn't do. They dropped the ball. They know it. I was headed to work when y'all stopped me. <laughs> Last month, one of the 20 former felons arrested as part of this roundup had his case dropped over jurisdictional issues. I'm Katie Legrone reporting.